Hello, I'm Epic X Toy Cat, and 1.17, or the Caves and Cliffs Part 1 update, is coming out really soon, and a lot of people want to start new worlds, and today I want to show you exactly why you should do that. I mean, look at all the changes between this generation in 1.16, with its mountain and its village and its fairly default caves around here, and let's look at the same seed in 1.17 to show you how massively different it is. As you can see, that exact same world, but in 1.17, looks entirely different. I mean, the village... I mean, that the village might look the same, but I mean the cliffs, because it's the caves and cliffs update. I mean, there's the, the cliff has changed by adding a tree, it looks like. <laughs> and also you'll find goats on there, but you'd also find goats if you load this up in your previous world. But I mean, the caves part of the caves and cliffs, that is hugely different, right? There is no denying that. And you'd be totally right. I mean, look at these caves next to the spawn in 1.16. I mean, they're not even really caves, but they're part of the generation. But if we look there after 1.17, wow, they've got a tiny bit of water at the bottom. And th this is even crazier. This is gravel now. I, I don't know why it wasn't gravel before, but it is now. But it totally is. So there are some changes most notably including crashing it seems. And if we do dive into those caves, you'll notice there are only really two features that are substantially different and worth finding in chunks that will load after this update versus before. One of those is these amethyst geodes, and I'll admit these are nice, these are beautiful, these are worth finding, but you really only need to find one or two in your world, you don't need to have dozens or whatever else. And the other thing that you're going to find only in new chunks, I mean besides all of the blocks that come along with this amethyst geode, is obviously you're going to find a brand new ore. They added a brand new ore to Minecraft in this update. It's called copper ore and it makes copper. It's very exciting and you're going to want some of this. And you might be thinking, wow, I'll make a new world just for new copper and amethyst geodes, but those would be the two only reasons. And so even if you want to explore the other changes that you'll only be able to in new 1.17 chunks, you're still best keeping with your existing world for now because this is the update that has changed the least about the world uh, since the Buzzy Bees update. And before that, we have to go back years to find equivalent. So this is the worst point in time to start a brand new uh, Minecraft world, unless you really just wanted to anyway. And let me prove that well as to why. By going back to my 2012 world, I started this world in the second half of 2012. And so that means it was before uh, andesite and granite and diorite generated to the ground. If you look below ground, you won't find any of those blocks. Seriously, it's just stone all the way around. It's kind of ugly, some could say. Sorry, I lied when I said it was just stone. There's actually dirt and there's gravel. But here's the crazy thing about updates. When Minecraft changes the world generation, it will never change your existing world. Here I am playing in 2021, but I've still got this old terrain generation. But in 2014 or 15, uh, an update came out that brought in andesite and granite to the console versions of Minecraft. And so the new chunks they generated after that time, as you can see, here is some granite, here is some diorite. You can almost magically see the line where all of a sudden, old generation becomes new generation. With It also changed a few other things about the underground but those are the biggest ones that you're going to uh, notice. Brand new blocks are available. In case you think this is a limited phenomenon as well, allow me to show you this. This is a little forest that generated back when there were fewer biomes. On the other side of that forest are brand new biomes that happened. The same thing happened even as recently as 1.13. That is the update that changed the oceans. It's called the aquatic update, but I like the update that changed the oceans. If you had an old ocean before that point, you can still keep your terrible ocean that's just got gravel on the floor and they'll make some changes to it. So dolphins will generate here and drowns will generate. The analogs to that in 1.17 are that you'll be able to find goats on your existing mountains. You'll find glow squid in your existing cave likes and you'll find axolotls there as well um, but you see, still can keep your old terrain but the moment you explore a new chunk it's like loading up a brand new world so to show an example of that I guess we have to play a lot further away and so here you can see next to some very strange terrain generation uh, what is a brand new ocean with all of the brand new ocean parts namely these sea grasses and also there's some kelp over there somewhere uh, basically all of the new things from the update could be explored in my existing world the reason the update adventures world works is big you know, here is some cap here is all of the new things from the update product uh, including the new treasure ships every single feature of any brand new update can always be explored in an existing world there are very 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 few exceptions to that because minecraft knows people are attached to these worlds for a long time lots of the minecraft staff members themselves are in the same boat lady agnes has had her survivor world it's it's very pretty by the way since <laughs> uh, since i think she said 2010 some absurdly long time and there are many other minecraft developers in the same boat they don't don't want to make new ex features exclusive to new worlds and although that's what some games do it's never what you'll see in minecraft and so as a result you can always keep your old terrain generated 
after an update. In fact, it gets a lot rarer if you think about it. In the same way that like misprinted currency is more interesting and therefore more valuable, um, your old terrain generation, sometimes your very ugly terrain generation, like look at this, What what is this? Um, your old terrain generation is going to be more interesting after the update than the new stuff. But what is the new stuff exactly? I mean, it's just amethyst geodes and copper, right? Well, I mean, there are more things and I figured I'd let you know about what those things are. So you know what to expect in your new chunks. Um, but also I wanted to give you a strategy as to how to explore your world to make sure that you don't ruin 1.18 for yourself because that is the update a lot of people will be resetting their worlds for. I don't recommend it, but if you want to start a new world, that's probably the update for it. And the strategy is simple. Explore in one direction. When you go in one direction, you're exploring brand new chunks all the time. I don't think I've been to this part of my Let's Play world, so every single time it's loading in a new chunk, it's loading it in in the current update. If it was 1.17 as I recorded this, this would be loading in brand new 1.17 chunks with all of their exciting features I'll talk about in a second. Um, but then if you explore in just one direction this way, you know that all you have to do to find new caves and cliffs when new biomes come out and new cliffs come out, because the caves and the cliffs aren't changing till part two of the Caves and Cliffs update, uh, but you can explore those features, obviously, when 1.18's out, by just going left or just going right. By exploring in a straight line, or exploring in one specific direction at the very least, you can minimize these problems. But what are the other features you can expect to find under the ground after 1.17? Allow me to list all of them. So copper ore generating naturally is obviously one of the big ones. This is a pretty block if you want to silk touch it. You could get the, the ore block itself. I'd recommend probably instead mining it with a fortune pickaxe and getting a ton of copper. That's a great idea. Um, then obviously there is the amethyst geodes, which come with not only an amethyst block, which is pretty, not only the crystals, which you can turn into amethyst blocks as well as tinted glass, not only this calcite block and this smooth basalt block, which technically already exists, um, but these blocks will also be uh, you know, spawning in the new chunks in addition to glow lichen. I'm excited for glow lichen. I think I'm the only person in the world. Also, I think some people call it glow lichen. Which is it? You know, get, let me know comment section. This is a very non-controversial subject. Also, did you know that there is going to be deep slate? This will generate under the ground, and uh, although it's kind of uh, a weird one because it's going to generate in splodges, uh, let's not question uh, uh, <laughs> deep slate, but it's a brand new block that creates a lot of new variants. You will need to explore new chunks to find that. So again, immediately day one of the new update, you want to play around with new stuff, find new chunks so you can find all of these new things. If that involves starting a new world, then sure, but you can do so on your existing worlds. But the other unconventional thing you're going to need to look for, only in new chunks, are abandoned mine shafts. Abandoned mine shafts will be able to spawn with glow berries. This is actually a cool coincidence that this one did. Abandoned mine shaft chests can have these glow berries, which you're going to want because they're a brand new update food that will spawn exclusively there. So that's that's fun and exciting. And obviously you need to do that alongside getting yourself some golden apples. Why wouldn't you want that? Finding new abandoned mine shafts is going to be key. Also, obviously, alongside new abandoned mine shafts, you can uh, you, you can find this in old ones too, but they're going to be extra useful. For finding gold, now that you can fortune up gold, you get a lot more gold value for your buck, as well as obviously uh, if you find some iron, which we totally did, you'll get a lot more iron because again, when you mine iron and when you mine gold, you get raw iron and raw gold respectively. So that's very exciting. And the final thing that again is not very expected, it's not something you would have uh, known about if you were just following snapshots or betas a while ago and didn't know about the split, but it's a very weird one you need to know. But you're going to need to get your hand on some of these. Abandoned shipwrecks or just shipwrecks. I'm the only one who calls them abandoned. I mean, isn't a shipwreck by its very nature abandoned? Why do I say unnecessary things? These are questions I don't have the answer to, but I can tell you, you're gonna wanna find the chests in these things because after the update, as well as finding buried treasure maps and books and paper, you know, of all the things you would expect to find under the ocean, Paper is not one of them, but the point is, is after the update, you'll be able to find moss in these chests, and this is the only way to get moss that we know of right now. So do keep in mind, those things will only spawn in your new chunks, but everything else about this update can be explored in existing chunks. You know, this brand new glow squid, very exciting. As long as there is stone in a cave or under any water um, that you can find, uh, then you're going to be able to find yourself a glow squid. The, their spawning condition being stone-based is kind of weird, but... You know what? I, I can live with it, I guess. So squid, glow squid, you're going to find them. Axolotls, you're going to find them. You're going to find goats in your existing chunks. Without ever having to load up anything new or a new world, you can find these bedazzling creatures that were totally worth voting for. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we don't have a yellow cow now because we have a glowing squid. 
How exciting. I actually do like the signs. But, like, this was about to be terrible, okay? You know what? You're, you're lucky that they happen to make glow signs amazing. This is Mojang's job, not your job, community. So, anyway, uh, glow squids are exciting. All three of the new mobs will be explorable in the current update. Obviously, as well as that, if you want to just mine iron and gold and you don't care about copper because you don't think it's a pretty block, um, then you can obviously find a ton of these blocks now. And that feature will be explorable in the current update. When you mine these, you'll get the raw iron and the raw uh, gold, which, you know, I think these blocks are super interesting. Some people say they look like beans, and other people, uh, you know, are incorrect about the, the type of block. But you get the point. Like, there is a, there are brand new blocks that you can play around with. Lots and lots and lo lots of them will not require any playing around new chunks. It's just that also, there are so many variants of Deep state, uh, Slate and so many variants of, um, <laughs> of Copper that you're going to want to play around with those things. But just bear in mind, you never need to start a new world. A lot of people do that, and it's great. Like, starting a new Minecraft world is fun. Um, but personally, I've always been uh, a big believer in the virtues of like, you know, stick with your existing Minecraft world. You'll enjoy it more in the long run. But maybe that's a, a whole nother video for a whole nother day. All I know for now is that I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope it was a useful guide as to why you shouldn't start a brand new world after 1.17 comes out. And if it wasn't, then I'm sorry for laying you down. But I hope you all enjoyed the video anyway, because I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.